Welcome to Westpac's archives. This is where we store thousands of records dating back to 1816. Today we're going to be talking about Westpac's corporate wardrobe. There we go. We've got a brand new building in the middle of Sydney. Lady Davidson, the wife of the CEO, is asked to design a fabulous new dress for the female staff. And it was designed to fit or to complement the interiors of the new 341 George Street. It's actually our very first corporate uniform. In the 1950s, you had the very first time that women were entering the workforce in big numbers. And it was designed to give everybody a sense of the professionalism. Post the war, we, we, we saw a big change in the nature of the Australian economy and the rise of the service industries, which really brought a lot of women back into, into the workforce. This saw female participation rise to around 30% by the 1960s. Well, here we are again. Westpac wardrobe time. The 80s were an interesting time. Um, when the 80s started, the participation rate was around 40%. Driven on the back of more women going through education, entering the workforce, starting their careers. A lot of those people who were amongst the first group cohort to go to university were now the first group to start returning to work after having children as well. Our iconic image of that time is the, one of the first dresses that was modelled by a very, very young Elle McPherson. It's not just this utilitarian, let's go to work kind of wardrobe. It's a let's celebrate being women going to work wardrobe. This continued on from the 1980s and we saw female participation rise from the 40% to, to the sort of low 50s by the year 2000. Male participation at the same time, however, has been declining. If current trends continue, somewhere around about 2040 to 2050, we'll see them being equal somewhere in the mid 60s. 